Hey guys, welcome back to Clashing with Cory. Uh, I'm here today to cover some 10v10 content from uh, an epic war between WHF and Night War. And of course we all know WHF is uh, uh, a war clan in CWL invite. And Night War apparently is uh, a war clan from the No Dip League. Um, excellent war from both sides. So many 11v11s and 10v10s. Uh, it was a no dip war, so each clan had uh, one Town Hall 10 left on the board at the end of the war, and that's it. And WHF won on percentage. Very close war. Uh, just, just an absolute war of titans. The Night War, those guys over there, obviously very good if they can hang with, you know, CWL invite clans. All right, so we're going to get right into some attacks. God, there's so many attacks from this. Uh, honestly, I'm going to get a couple videos worth of footage from it. I uh, just picked out six for this video. Of course, the first one is going to be a little bit of a process video, uh, just because I always like to show you know, the process of how you get to a three-star. So this is going to be an excellent attack by Mango Brain, WHF, and he ends up with a 95%. He gets some good value on some bowler bounces. Uh, there at the beginning, using a golem down there at the bottom and some hogs and and a couple wizards behind that to set that whole funnel that whole side basically. Now he's got his battering ram coming in on the left side. And remember that always goes straight for the town hall. So wherever you drop it, it's going to cut a straight line to the town hall through whatever stands in its way. So he's got that funnel cut down on the bottom, and he's got the battering ram going in. Heroes coming in behind. He's got bowlers coming out of his CC that were in the battering ram. He's got a poison and a freeze coming down on the enemy CC. Now, that's a nice combination for a lot of things, but you got to remember he's got hogs for the back end here. And anytime you're hogging, or you know your your main portion, your back end troop is hogs, you definitely want to save a poison for skelly traps. So hogs are coming in. I mean, it's good base he's hitting, so they're hitting the traps. Um, but you know, he's got one group coming in through the main portion of the base, and then he's got a group on the side taking out those side defenses. He's got four heals, um, you know, more than we ever used to have for back end hogs, because this new battering ram just gets so much more value from the kill squad. They are picking up a lot of skeletons along the way. Last heal, last two heals go down on two different groups of hogs. And all those skellies on the bottom are just really wearing down that first group of hogs. When you get three traps worth of skelly spells all piled up, they can do a lot of damage. So really close hit, really good hit. Uh, just falls a little bit short. So now we're going to go in. See the, the cleanup hit on that one that was done by Goldeneye. Goldeneye six packed this war. So he brings a few more bowlers, and he gets a, a couple extra bowler bounces, just to improve the hog pathing a little bit, and, you know, take care of those free mortars where you can with one bowler. Another one on the left side there, and then down at the bottom as well. So other than that, his army's largely the same. He's got one less hog, maybe a few more, a few more funneling cleanup troops. We, like I said, we had some extra bowlers in there. And uh, other than that, it's going to go pretty much the same, except for instead of a freeze and a poison, he's got two poisons. Heroes coming in. Kill squad coming in the exact same spot. Now, he is going to get his rage down a little bit sooner for, those, for the bowlers and his CC. There we go. We got one poison down on the enemy CC. Queen's finally going to go in there and take care of that dragon. And just like Mango did, he gets really good value on this kill squad. She's going to take out that expo. Then she's going to step up and take out that wizard tower. If you look over on the right, he's already got a couple goblins funneling down that town hall. Or, uh, not funneling, but cleaning up that town hall. First heal comes down. He's got his hogs coming in on the side to work on that outer ring, and then he puts some more with that main group of hogs, too. He wants to make sure those aren't going to thin out. Another heel going down there. Another one on the side group. The side group's getting a little bit thin, but he's going to have just enough. That double cannon's being tanked by the main group, so that helps out quite a bit. Now he gets that last 
his second poison down there to take out all those skellies at once. And his main group is just a little bit stronger, so he's going to have plenty to get through the rest of this base. Uh, times two from there, because it's just cleanup. Nice little adjustment for Goldeneye. Anytime you get an attack that has a 95%, there's usually one or two little things you can change to turn that into a three star. If you got a 95%, you're almost there. You're on the right track. Nice triple. All right. Next hits we're going to cover are actually a fresh six pack by Immortal Jazz. First one he lays down is going to be on there, number 10. Since it's fresh, I don't have a, a process to show you, and that's okay. Uh, basically, he's using the power of this battering ram. He's not even bringing any golems at all, just using the battering ram and some funneling troops to get his heroes in there, get some great value, and then hitting the rest of the base with a ton of loons and hounds. Setting up the funnel there to get both his heroes in. Now this was a fresh hit, so you'll see his queen's going to walk on him because this Tesla comes up uh, right down there below her and pulls her down, but that's okay. Uh, the battering ram still gets some great value. He's got CC Valks in there. I really like CC Valks inside the battering ram because they're a lot tankier than bowlers. Um, you know, you got to remember that battering ram, by the time it breaks, it's in front of all your other troops. I mean, it's in front of your king. It's in front of any other golems you might have. So when bowlers pop out of it, they're immediately taking some really heavy fire. You know, and, uh, you know, Valks take heavy fire too, but, you know, they're a lot tankier than bowlers. They're not going to reach over the wall, but they'll definitely mess up everything in that compartment. So look at this. He, remember, he didn't have a golem at all. That was just a battering ram full of CC Valks. And he took out a huge chunk of the base. He's got a nice L shape left over uh, for the Lalo. Really nice looking loon drop. See how I did some out there on the far right to take care of that sweeper in there and really get into the core. Other than that, it's just a rotational Lalo. Lots of haste. Come down to do a rage, and he's going to use a heal on the backside. Honestly, didn't even need it. Look how many loons he's got left. Absolutely crushed this base. Wrecked it. Just clean up now, so we'll fast forward it a little bit. Absolutely crushed this base. Beautiful attack. Right, and that was the first hit Immortal Jazz did. Now we'll show his second one. Got a common theme here. Uh, pretty similar army composition. Uh, you know, when you've got this battering ram that can cut in and great, great value out of such a small kill squad, your back end based attacks like the Lava Loon and, and Hogs are really gonna thrive when you can gr get great value with that small entry force. So once again, he's doing the same attack on a different base. This one's got a Hound Loon CC. Once again, you can tell it's a fresh hit. If he would have known that was in the CC, he would have sent his queen around on the outside somewhere, getting even more value, probably up top taking out some of those wizard towers. But queen steps in. That's okay. He's going to pop her ability to handle the rest of these pups. So the Hound definitely stops your queen from getting as much value as she otherwise would but still considering there's no golems in that kill squad he still cuts out a nice chunk of that base you know he definitely didn't get as much as he was hoping to get on that you know he at least wanted to get one of those air defenses too but his his lalo drops just gonna save it God, what a beautiful attack. Definitely wish I could Lalo like this guy. Honestly, I don't even know what to say about it. That was just really beautiful. So this one's going to get a little thinned out just because of that hound in the CC. He didn't get quite as much of a push as he thought he was going to get. So it gets close, uh, but he's got a ton of loons in that group. And, you know, air defenses might be scary, but they can really only shoot at one loon at once. Why they go to that cannon... <laughs> 
I don't understand how that cannon is closer than that air defense, but they do. It, it doesn't matter. There's so many loons, they're going to grab that air defense too. Still wrecks the base. Um, you know, was it closer than the last one? Yeah, still wasn't that close. He's got a bunch of loons up. Another excellent attack by Mortal Jazz. Alright, so we've seen some Kill Squad Hog attacks, and we've seen some Kill Squad Lalo attacks. The next ones I'm going to show you are going to be Falcons. And I think these are interesting because out of all the attacks, I think this is the most difficult attack to incorporate the Battering Ram into. Um, you know, because Falcons are really best done. Uh, you got to find the right entry. You know what I mean? You got to find a great entry for your Falcon where the pathing's going to be right. And they're going to get, you know, good pathing, good value. And, uh, you know, you can't just enter anywhere in three star base with the Falcon, not even close. Uh, but when you find a great entry, uh, it's, it's an absolutely devastating attack. Now, the problem with the battering ram is it always goes towards the town hall. And that doesn't mean that it's always going to be entering at the right spot or pathing the way that you want it to. So Shantu gets, uh, oh, this is a fresh hit, by the way, and gets a great pathing for his queen. Burns a rage on the walk, but he's, he's getting a lot of value for it. He took out a Tesla farm, took out a bunch of defenses on that outer ring right there. Great value for the queen walk. As you can see, he's going he's gonna to lay his king down on the other side and start funneling to enter his Valks in right here. And after that, look at the pathing. It's going to path right past both these Inferno Towers. Excellent entry for Falcon. So he gets his Valks down, and he gets Battering Ram down. Now, if you look at the Battering Ram, dude's kind of going the wrong way. He's not going to enter it in the right spot. I don't know if he dropped it down in the wrong spot, or if he was trying to break the Queen in right there. Probably not. Maybe just kind of a misclick. Um, but anyways, it's going to work out okay, because he picked a really great spot to enter this, this Falcon. He popped his King ability just in time to cut the funnel for those Valks. Got the poison down on the CC. Missed the baby dragon. That's all right. Archer's going to step up there and get it. Now, he did end up popping his battering ram open to get those bowlers in there and follow behind the Valks. But I would say in this attack, the battering ram didn't really help at all. Um, it was an excellent attack. Uh, it was well planned. It was He entered from a, you know, a beautiful side. Excellent entry for a Falcon. Great plan. I just don't think the battering ram really helped benefited that plan at all. And that's fine. Falcon's a dominating attack, but it is, and I know it from experience too, when the, the battering ram first came out, it's very difficult to time it and, and, uh, and get a good Falcon entry done with the battering ram. Just the same. Excellent fresh three star from Sean too. I'm going to clean up now, so I'll fast forward it a little bit. All right, and the next one I'm going to show you is also a falcon. Be on number eight right here. By Johnny Boy. Now, this one was not a fresh hit, but I believe it was the first falcon done on this base. Uh, had a couple plants run on it for uh, an entry and a lalo on it, and it just weren't, wasn't quite enough. So Johnny Boy takes a fresh look at it after a few of those didn't work and decides he really likes this falcon entry down here at the town hall. So he starts his queen up there. Really glad he brought five healers on this walk because she's taking some heavy fire. Gonna bust that rage down to get his queen through all those defenses. She's gonna keep walking down. Drops the king down with a few wizards behind to cut the other side of the funnel for those Valkyries. So they go on the base right by that town hall. And down come the Valkyries. Battering Ram comes in right behind him. So, I mean, it is gonna it is gonna get to the wall a little quicker. Um, other than that, they're just right at the town hall, so it opens. So, you know, once again, we got a Falcon that and it was a great Falcon. It was a great attack on this base, um, but it's it's really difficult to utilize the battering ram to the best of its capability on a falcon. 
Rage is down. Healing the Valks up on the back end. He's got a Rage for the back end there. Excuse me. Got a Freeze for the back end. So, man, pathing was really nice for that base. Now he's got a bunch of Wizard Towers on the back of this. Uh, he brought a bunch of Loons because he knew he was going to take out all the air defenses with his entry. And... Really cool to see how he plays this free spell and drops these eight loons to take out. You gotta remember, he's got three wizard towers left up. Taking out three wizard towers with eight loons is a really tall order. You know what I mean? He's gonna do it beautifully. Now he's dropping in the loons. Two different groups targeting that first wizard tower. That way, if the wizard tower locks on, it can't target all four of those loons at once. It can only target two at a time. Sure enough. Now he's got that freeze down cover in all three of those defenses in that compartment. They're not, they're not able to start firing on those loons until the loons are already on top of them. Eats a red bomb right there. That's unfortunate. But he's still got his king coming around the outside. And he's still got two loons for that back end wizard tower. The patience that he showed on letting those Valks die out. And really getting some clear pathing uh, on how he's going to do his loon drop. Man. I don't think I would have done that. I think I would have dropped him too soon and probably blown it. His patience was excellent. Great plan, Johnny boy. Excellent attack. Um, so, you know, kill squad base attacks with back end troops. His battering rams are absolutely killing it. It has been definitely a big challenge to work the battering ram into a lot of falcon attacks. Uh, you know, and it, also the new free spell is great. Uh, we're really liking it. We're finding a lot of great uses for it. But if you're using hogs on the back end, I would strongly suggest that you don't bring a freeze. Bring two poisons instead. Save one for those back end skellies. And uh, so that's all I've got for right now. Uh, we did have a lot of great attacks in this war, so I'm going to probably get one more video worth of content out of it. But, you know, I decided to cut it in half because of time. Really appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. Hit the subscribe button for more Town Hall 10 uh, three-star content. We'll see you next time.